Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today for Office Hours. I'm Jenna and I'm the content marketer here at BMO, so I'll be your host for the day. I'll just recap what Susie was explaining. I know some of you joined on a couple minutes late, just so we're on the same page. So our office hours today are going to be whatever you guys make them. I'm sure you, you remember in college when you'd go to office hours with a professor, you could ask questions, get more information, whatever you needed. So this is going to be the same thing. We've got a handful of slides today just to get the juices flowing about device management, and then we'll be opening it up to you guys. I'll be monitoring the chat as we go along, so feel free to drop questions in there as they come up, or go ahead and raise your hand, unmute yourself, whatever you're comfortable with. And then a few quick housekeeping items. We will be holding office hours next Wednesday as well at the same time to workshop email and document security. And then we'll drop a link for that at the end for signups. And then we'll also have its deal at the end for attendees. So make sure you stick around. Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce your expert for the day, Suzanne Sims. Suzanne Sims is our modern work evangelist at BMO. She holds Microsoft certifications in MS 900, MS 700, and is currently working towards the MS 100. Without revealing Suzanne's age, we will tell you that she's been a Microsoft enthusiast for her entire career and has experienced the progression of Microsoft product innovation from the days when graphical operating systems first appeared and the only cloud was the white thing in the sky. Suzanne was actually a BMO customer prior to joining the BMO team. She was the IT director of, at, a pub, at a public school, and she successfully shifted their on-premise infrastructure to the Microsoft Cloud, which paved the way for a very successful distance learning environment during COVID. Finding technology solutions to solve business problems is her forte. Her professional experiences have made her a jack of all trades, from positions in customer support, network administration, software testing, technical training, all the way to managing an IT company on the Wind River Reservation. She's experienced a multitude of roles and is happy to be here today to lend her expertise and answer any questions you guys may have. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and hand this off to Susie. Thank you, Jenna. So trying to get this a little bit more conversational and get you participating since it would be office hours where we do want you to ask questions. We're going to start out with an icebreaker. Everybody gets an icebreaker. So first of all, just where is everyone joining us from today? You can take yourself off mute or you can just put it in the chat. I'm actually from Houston, Texas. Houston. Oh, Houston's in the house. Texas. Joseph, <laughs> I was gonna say we have some. We have a lot of Texans that work at BMO. Well, I'm oh, located in Arizona. Oh. Where are we located from? We're remote. Everybody's remote. So I'm in Arizona, and as I said, Julia's in Alaska, and she was in Hawaii. Josh and Adam, where are you from? <laughs> I am also from Houston, Texas, as is Joseph in the chat. I'm from Michigan. There you go. Oh, great. Okay, and yeah. Oh, there he goes. Houston. All right. Surprised you didn't put a GIF in there. Okay, so we could... We're majority. Good to know. What's that? <laughs> that we are the majority. I don't know if my mic is messing up. It's a joke. We're, it's just know. real quiet. It's just real quiet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No Houston problem. is the majority. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. Great. We'll roll on to the next one. We won't talk about the weather. We just know the weather's pretty horrible here and it's coming your way, Texas. Oh, maybe not. It's coming to the Midwest <laughs> somewhere. Yes, it is coming your way in two days. That's all I'm going to say. Should be sunny here and it's raining. All right, let's go ahead and roll into the formal part of it. We'll break at slide seven, get you to start thinking about your environment. And then by the end, like I said, we'll just do straight on Q&A or if you really just would rather see a demo, I can do that for you too. So we're just gonna, we did this in the last slideshow, but it's just the opener for the whole presentation the top challenges for small and medium businesses. And as we see it day in and day out, our customers struggle with these three challenges. <clears throat> How can we do distributed work better? 
while maintaining security? And how can we reduce our costs? And this is especially challenging when you have employees working from multiple locations. So you have an office, but you also have them working from home, hybrid type situation. Or maybe they're just working at home a couple days a week and in the office the rest of the time. And then you have a multitude of personal and mobile devices. Maybe you have people checking their email on their personal phone, but you give them a company-owned device. Or maybe you don't have any company-owned devices and they're using their personal devices entirely. Tough to maintain security when you've got all these endpoints, machines in different places. And then, of course, increased phishing and ransomware, which we know there's been increased attacks on small businesses. So how can we beef up security but still keep our costs low and address those situations? Okay, so if you were on our webinar last time and if you weren't, well, we'll put it out there. We'll send a link because we went into deep depth on identity security. So business premium is the answer to solve those challenges. And the reason is this layered security across identity, device, application, and document. So let me turn on my little laser pointer. So why do you need to manage the machines and endpoints that access your company data? Why do you need to manage those? You're thinking, I have antivirus protection, you know, I manage your identities, I have some basic security applied, and we've got it all covered. And this slide gives you that because email is not the only door for hackers, right? Especially if you have some of those challenges going on with all kinds of different devices all over the place, right? You've got open doors everywhere. So we hear a lot about multi-layered protection. And what does that mean? And we're talking about a proactive security approach, and it enc encompasses all aspects of your business from multiple standpoints. And here you can see those standpoints. So again, identity, Jenna's gonna send that link out to the last one. We covered this really in depth. Today, we're gonna talk about device security, and then we're also gonna talk a little bit about application. <clears throat> So I just want to make sure I hit all the, yeah. So right here, we're going to show you Intune. That's your full centralized management portal service for mobile and laptops. And then we'll show you a little bit about remote wipe, which is really important. And then a little example on having pin requirements, configuration profiles with Wi-Fi and VPN. And then we'll also talk about this point right here where we're restricting copy, paste, and save corporate data to personal apps. So we're gonna be talking about, they have their personal phones or their personal devices and they've got all their junk on it, right? You don't know what they're doing on their devices. You don't know what they have installed on their devices, but yet they're accessing your data on those devices. So how can you control that through application management and how can you control that even further through device management? Here we go. Now we went from complicated to fun side. So yeah, if we could go ahead and deal with BYOD, manage an explosion of devices and multi-OS support, secure employees, apps, contents, and devices. Yeah, that'd be great, right? So that's how it feels. Where do you start? Who's handling all this? Yeah, I want it, but, and then how much does it cost? It sounds pretty complicated, right? So hopefully we can clear up some stuff for you today, at least where you have a basis of understanding of how to address, if you do have a need, how to address it. First of all, MDM, MAM, BYOD, Intune, what the heck's Intune? We are kind of like all these terminologies. So I'd like to start this one where we're going to start interacting a little bit, start thinking, then I'm going to start showing, and then we'll engage, prompt you with some questions. So right now, I'd like you to think about your own environment, right? And we can go ahead and you can just do it in the chat if you want, or you can just take yourself off mute and I promise I'll pause and be quiet. But do employees use their own devices, their own personal devices, or are you issuing company-owned devices? Now thinking this could be laptops, this could be phones, this could be tablets, this could be desktops too. So these are all endpoints, right? When we talk about endpoints, they're the things that are accessing your company data, right? 
There we go. No, we use company. Oh, yay. Good. Company owned devices. Very important. What that's actually okay. Now that's good. They use iPhone and Android mobile devices. Are those company owned or are they personal? Personal. Okay. We have personal mobile. Personal. Okay. Okay. So we've got two personal and one company. Great. And sometimes not one solution fits all. Company owned devices cost money, right? And maybe you only have a handful of employees or maybe you have contractors and you know, you're not going to issue. There you go. I use a company owned laptop. Sometimes on the go, I use my personal. Exactly. So yeah, we have that situation as well. We all get windows. Oh, Javier, somebody admit minimum. Okay. We use Intune MAM for Android and iPhone. Wow. Okay. Great, because we're going to cover MAM first, then we're going to cover MDM. Okay, so I already have an expert on MAM, but we'll just discuss it briefly, and then we'll roll on to MDM, and then we'll uh, roll on to actual Windows devices. So it's great. We have a little bit of everything going on here. Let's see. And you gave me operating systems. Nobody has Mac OS, Android, iOS, Windows, or a mix. Okay. I didn't think anybody said... Windows devices. They said company owned. Does anybody have Windows devices? Company owned Windows devices? Laptops? Desktops? I'm not getting a yeah on anything. Okay. Surfaces. Wow. Okay. Nick's in the same boat as us. Awesome. Okay. So if you have any confusion of we have company owned Windows devices and Macs. Okay, now we've got every flavor in the house. Okay, we've covered all the bases. Great. And we have Windows devices, Taylor. Okay. <clears throat> all right. And if you ever have any question about personal versus corporate devices for remote work, like the pros and cons and how you manage the, oh, Josh, you don't have Linux. <laughs> Had to throw that one in the mix. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the pros and cons. We have a great blog. Jenna will put that in the post. I think Joseph wrote that blog, and it really is a great blog to give you a overview of corporate versus personal, pros and cons, and then the whole MDM versus MAM. So, not Jenna. Julia is throwing that in the chat. Sorry, Jenna's not responsible for links today. Julia, can you throw that in the chat? Great. All right. So let's start with our focus today, device management, right? And we talked about endpoints. So I think everybody understands it. It sounds like a good understanding of what an endpoint is. So you have two goals. Thanks, Julia. You want to enable your users, right? But you want to protect your data. And sometimes those two feel like they conflict. And the different devices, we talked about those, and then the different flavors of devices. So tablets, phones, desktops, laptop, laptops, Different flavors, iPhone, Android, Mac, Linux, I guess, if you're Josh. And then protect your data on all those devices. Okay, so this is the part we're getting into the technical part, right? So yeah, 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 we know what we have. But what are we going to control and how are we going to control it? So that's where we get into the terms MAM, MDM, and then also, better yet, MDM on Windows devices, where you get total control. But we're going to go through a little bit on each one of those. And the options are flexible and we're not saying, oh, you have to use any one of those. I'm just admitting, I don't know. We're not saying that you have to use any of those. Your business needs are different. We're just giving you the options. And then hopefully at the end, maybe you wanna see some of the actual controls so you can get it in your mind. Like, oh yeah, I have a need for that. And that'll help you decide. Point is business premium includes Intune, okay? so. Intune is the Microsoft service that manages the endpoint. Business premium includes it in the price. Okay. So that's why we're making this a business premium webinar. It is a feature. <clears throat> and you can manage all your endpoints in one place. Okay. Let's roll on to the details of those. And look, we're already past the halfway point on the slides. So no worries. Mobile application management. So there's a couple approaches here that we can use. We're going to start, I call this the simplest, right? And it's typically used for personally owned devices. So that BYOD, bring your own device. It, they personally own it. They don't want your company managing the device. You know, don't be touching my stuff. You know, I just want to 
access my stuff on my own computer. So you're like, how can I control that? So at a very basic level, you can control the application. So here, let me get my laser pointer. The difference between the two, pretty application versus device, right? It's what are you going to control? You are going to control in MAM the applications, the work applications, the data in those work applications on their personal device. That's all you're controlling, right? You're separating it, right? So here it says there's no device enrollment. So they technically don't need to enroll the devices in Intune. If it's a phone, you know how you add your ID, right? And then that's using that identity layer. So we do have protection there for their account. They're going through the identity layer. Then they're going ahead, they're downloading the app on their own, the Outlook app or whatever, and then they're going ahead and signing in with that account to the company portal. This is where you can start controlling a little bit, okay? So you can manage the security of only those applications, not the device. So if it's Outlook and they have their company ID on Outlook, then you're managing the Outlook application work data, okay? So you can secure your corporate data within the apps. And you can see in the reporting. So in Intune, you have the big picture, all the, you can see all the activity of what the device is doing. But here we're just talking about applications. So you're only seeing application inventory and usage. Okay. And then you can remove corporate data. So this is the big one. Somebody leaves the company, right? Yeah, you can obviously delete their ID or block their sign in, but what if they've got data downloaded onto their devices? If you're not managing them at all, they've got your data, right? <laughs> you have no way of, they're out there. They have it on their device, boom, it's gone, right? So this ma'am would provide you that base level where, okay, at least I've said the company data is only on these apps and I'm controlling those apps on your phone, I'm not controlling the rest of your phone, but I am controlling that. And now I'm saying, oh, you've left, I'm going to wipe that data from your phone. I'm not wiping your phone, right? I'm going to wipe that data from your phone with the push of a button remotely in the Intune portal, and then I'll delete your ID, right? Okay, so you can't log in from anywhere. There you go. Okay, on to MDM. So MDM provides you a greater level of control because you can control the device itself. So obviously it's typically used for company owned devices, right? Users enroll their devices into Intune and it uses certificates to communicate with Intune. And as an IT administrator, you can push apps to those devices. You can restrict the devices to like even a specific operating system level. So you can say you have to have iOS this version or you're not compliant and you can't connect. Boom, it's done, right? That's compliance. You can block personal devices, you know, it's like, oh, if this is a personal device, then we don't allow it at all. It has to be a work MDM. And if the device is lost or stolen, you can also remove all the data from the device. So there's lots more examples, but we're just gonna give you a basic to try to compare. So an example would be like users need a Wi-Fi or a VPN corporate connectivity profile. You can give these through configurations. You can push those out, right? So you can pre-configure those type things and push them out to the devices. Maybe users need a specific set of apps pushed out and that's all you want them to use on the device. You can do that. Maybe your organization needs to comply with regulatory or other policies that call out specific MDM controls. And this happens. You're required to have a certain level of security on the devices or, it, for example, it needs to be encrypted, right? So with MDM, you can control that. Think about it. With MAM, you could go ahead. They don't have a password, right, on their phone at all. <laughs> and it's like, ah, you can get right into the app, right? You can just roll right into it and see the corporate data, right? With MDM on that same phone, you're managing the device because you can require that they have to have a pin on the phone to access any corporate data or whatever type of entry. So I'll show you that. 
I got one more to add there if you sure. could too. Sure. Great. Yes, um, please. One of the things I love here that we're using at BMO is when you go to log in to our devices, like on our personal devices, like on my phone, for Microsoft Outlook, when I'm looking at my work emails, there, we have a policy in place which prevents us from just not having the app secured. So every time I open Outlook, it has the Face ID support because I have an iPhone or you can fingerprint if you're on Android. It requires that I use Face ID to even get into Outlook. So I have two forms of security. Not only do you need a password or Face ID to get into my phone, but you also need a password to get into the, the, my work application. Good job, Adam. And guess what? You didn't know it, but yes, that's where I was going to show that. So you could have a visual. That's funny. He really Oops. did that. He's not. <laughs> no, did. it's one slide ahead. And so let's just go ahead and show it while you're talking about it. Right. So this would just now this is a man policy in this case. So let's just envision this is the iPhone, right? You know, from that person in the office that their kids play on their phone and they they don't put a password on the phone, <laughs> right? But they check their email and Teams on it. You're like, oh God, how am I gonna, you know, how am I gonna control this? So that's what Adam's talking about. There's an app protection policy in place, right? So that it requires a pin to get into those work apps. Now this particular phone doesn't have a bunch of different personal apps, but it is a personal phone. So this is a cool little simulator and you can see uh, the protections in place. And like Adam said, so he has facial recognition and so do, well, I don't have facial recognition on mine, but I have Microsoft Authenticator Touch, but it, we require a pin and boom, they can get in. So, and again, depending on the phone. And remember, this is device specific. So it, at the end, if you want me to show you, like if you want to get into technical stuff, I can show you, but there are profiles specific to the type of device. There's even some for Linux, but I've not looked at those. We'll let Josh, go ahead and demo that part. Okay, hop it back on. May FYI, it, uh, Intune apparently does work with Linux now. So. Yeah, <laughs> and it's in it's in the portal. That's why I'm laughing about it because yep. I'm like, it is in there. Now I messed up my. Let me see if I can get back to where appropriate. Sorry, guys. Bear with me. Uh, So Adam um, touched on, you know, the app protection policies that you have with MAM. And then this is a nice little slide that shows you like, you know, the limited things that you can do with MAM, right? So it's just application control on their personal devices. I mean, you can put this, you can use application control on corporate devices as well, but just MAM on personal devices, this is what you got. So right here, I let me get my laser on. So this device we know is MAM and it's, you don't enroll in Intune, right? But the application, because it's applications, remember, that's enrolled in Intune. Okay. This one actually, I think you can walk through. There you go. Okay. And then you can see that where you have the corporation account, right? And then the personal account, right? So they're both existing on this device. And there's two things here that you can do. Separate the company managed apps from the personal apps and set policies on how the data is accessed. So we talked about that, right? We we set the pin, right? They're separated. And if you go into those, you have to have a pin. Just one of many examples. The second one, this is interesting, ensure corporate data can't be copied and pasted to personal apps within the device, right? Hmm, now we're talking. There's another layer. So. Let me see if I can get this working. There you go. So you get an email, right? And you're using Outlook and that's protected because we have an app protection policy in place. And you open the attachment, right? You're just like, oh, I'm just gonna paste this over to my personal app, like my notes or whatever application so that I can work on it there. Well, now your data has left work, the work line, and now it's crossed into the personal line, right? So now you're like, uh, eh, I got to control that, right? So again, that's an app protection policy that you can apply. Then on top of it, like, oh, maybe I'm just going to save this file to my personal. So they have Hotmail. So they have a personal OneDrive. I'm just going to save it to my personal OneDrive. 
Okay. My personal OneDrive. I do all kinds of stuff in it. I'm like, I save all kinds of stuff. It's backed up to the cloud, right? It's everywhere now. So we say you can't save it to your personal storage. So finally, it's like, eh, what can I do with it, right? You can save it to your OneDrive for Business because we're managing that app, right? We manage that app because that OneDrive for Business goes with our company. Okay. Hey, we're almost there, guys. <laughs> I didn't want to make this too long, so we have time for questions. So MDM, right? So many more advanced features, and I can't list them all. So I try to just kind of give areas and examples. Okay, this is where the device gets enrolled into Intune. And you see it in the dashboard, right? You can see all your Linux devices shouldn't use Linux. I don't know if you can see it. I know you can set a policy. I don't know if you can see them. You can see all your Android devices. You can see all your iOS, your Mac, uh, and your Windows, right? And on top of it, when you're using MDM, Surface Management and your Surface. Oh, you've got a whole link. Thank you, Adam. So on top of it, you can see the health of those devices, right? So you get a window into the device, even though it's not sitting right there inside your company. Or it may be sitting inside your company, but you're still able to manage it and see it. So we mentioned, I guess I'll roll through some of these. Control features on the device. For example, AirPrint. So you got AirPrint on the iPhone and you don't want them to be able to print. That's where you need a device control or you want to control what lock screen messages come up, right? So they do have a lock on their phone, but those messages pop up and they're walking away at the restaurant and anybody can look at them, right? So that's where you need device control. Control settings, settings on the device itself. It's like you can't even... You can't get to any company data unless you have a pin on your phone or facial recognition or whatever. Control the camera or Bluetooth. You can even say, like, let's say it's a company-owned device and you don't want them using their camera. You can shut the camera off, right? You can shut their Bluetooth off. Trust me, when I worked in the school, I used a lot of configuration policies. We had Windows devices, but I shut it off everything because there, where there's a will, there's a way with students. <laughs> okay. And control how, and we talked about Wi Fi profiles, VPN profiles, how company data is accessed, what happens when you're out in public and trying to connect to public Wi Fi. Hmm, there's a hole. Um, securing your devices, right? Making sure you have antivirus protection. Wipe the devices if they're lost or stolen. If it's, remember, MDM company device. You, if it's lost or stolen, you want that device wiped and you want that ability and you need to be able to do it remotely. And then again, pushing apps to device, especially like Windows devices, pushing apps and updates. It's a lifesaver. So. I guess, we, what do you mean? Yeah. What do you mean by that, Susie, when you say push yeah. apps to devices? Yeah. Like what, is, can you elaborate a little bit more? I think it's vague and what it's. You what think it's, it's vague? Like, okay. I can show <laughs> Yeah, no, no I, I guess when I think of pushing apps, you yeah. mean pushing it to a profile. So what the customer signs in, the end user signs in, and then boom, just apps are there. Right. So I go for the windows on this because the other, let's say you have windows laptops, right? Pushing the desktop apps, which come, remember, so if you're coming from business basic, you don't have desktop apps, right? So they can't work on Office 365, locally on the machine. They're always working in the cloud, right? So you can actually, you know, use configuration policies to push the apps and even configure the settings. And yeah, so that's what we're talking about. Makes sense. Yeah. Yep. So I, one of the other, yeah, the third-party apps example, I guess something we use here at BMO, we use a third-party password management application. Just oh, so yeah, we all don't have to remember a thousand applications, right? So if okay. you have like third-party applications that you use for line of business, you could just push these applications right to a work profile so that when the customer, your end user, your employee signs into their device, their apps will already be on the machine. They don't have to go download yeah. this, download that. It's like, boom, that password management app's here. That's part of my line of business. Okay, now let's use single sign-on to sign into all these applications. It's providing it. Exactly. Support. Making it simple. I'm glad you said that. That's, making it simple for the user, right? That's the goal. Like, don't make them go out and find everything and download it. And then you're risking, like, what are they getting, right? Uh, yeah. You push it to them. Exactly. Thank you.
Oh, wait. Nope, we're not going to do a demo there. We're just going to go to the end. Okay, so we're trying to keep it simple. Let's talk about MDM, but let's talk about like you have window, your window shop, you know, you have surfaces, right? And you're buying them brand new, right? You're onboarding new employees. So here's where it's like, here's a question. Of course, because everybody has different environments, that makes it a tough, broad question. But think about what it takes to onboard a new employee, right? Like, how are you, the time it takes, and think about not the time it takes to order the machine, and like, think about the time it takes to do all that setup. And like Adam said, just setting up the desktop. Are you manually doing it? That's the question. I've been there. I've done it. It's horrible. <laughs> are you manually creating images? And how are you setting up those new devices? How long is it taking? So in the case, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because business premium includes autopilot. And if you have Windows devices, so a couple of you said have services and surfaces, and you're not using autopilot, probably really going to want to look into that. And the reason is because it's like a zero touch deployment, right? When they get the device, they open it up, that's fine. I'm not going to give you the technical details on the back end, how they register the device, but it can come straight from the vendor, send the device, and when they open the device, log in, it automatically enrolls them in that management we're talking about. Automatically enrolls the device in the management. Oh, man, you're a wealth. Adam is our super Sherlock Holmes link guy. Okay, thank you. And when that device is in, in, enrolled, then all the policies that apply to the device or the user that you set up, all those applications, you say, oh, you're in marketing. We want you to have all these applications, right, downloaded to the device. You can get very specific. Be like, oh, that device, you ordered it is on Windows 8.1 Pro, which I don't know, you can buy those anymore, right? But guess what? You, with Business Premium, have upgrade rights, right? So it's like, oh, no, upload or upgrade their OS to Windows 11. All that happens. Now, that wouldn't happen in 10 minutes if the device needed fully upgraded. But the zero touch thing would happen, right? So it's just like all those things can happen, like, out of the box. You don't have to answer all the questions. The user's like, it, it might not be a technology user. You know, this is a person that's low tech. You would have to walk them through, have an IT person. Oh, you need to answer it this way. Answer it this way. Answer it this way. Go there. Go here. This is that out-of-the-box experience. Probably enough said on that. Yeah? Okay. So anybody experiencing long? Well, this is though. Just think about it. We're just like, mm -hmm. if anybody wants to share what they're doing, that's fine. Or if it's a pain point, that's great. We're almost done, so you can bring it up in conversation. All right. And that brings us to updates, right? <laughs> what do we say to the Windows update? Not today. This is users. This is not IT people. We say yes today, right? But it's so funny because so we're still talking about managing Windows devices because we do have some people with Windows devices and getting users to controlling those Windows updates. So if you don't have in tune, you're not managing the endpoints and you do have Windows devices. You're just relying on them to update their devices, right? It's just like they're going out on their own, getting them, right? Well, you have no way of checking on them. It's like, uh, well, unless you physically go look, right? And so you're like, uh, you'd like to manage that from one place. And I came from a on-premise environment where we used WSIS, and it was a nightmare. But at least I could see where everything was at. And then I went to in the cloud, and I'm like, where's that at? And luckily, that's all there now in a nice, pretty portal. And it's fantastic because you can time the release. You don't want them to have feature updates, but they definitely need security updates. Yeah, there's another door. They got to have security updates on their device. You can't let them sit for years. I don't care. You can have all the email protection in the world, but if you haven't updated the devices, you've got a hole. All right. So are your users ignoring them? They could be. So all that can be managed in Intune. I did notice you can manage them uh, as far as I could show you at the end, but I did see a little bit of management with the MDM in the Android and the iOS where you could have an update profile in there. I can look at that with you. I'm not super familiar, but I know there is some update capability there to control. 
Yeah, I can yeah. quickly speak that because we use that okay. here at BMO, right? So like on my yeah. iPhone, I have the Windows Defender application. It forces me to do iOS updates on my phone. It's like, yeah. hey, your device is not compliant. It sends me right. updates and then you can yeah. set policies to be like, hey, if they're so far behind, then block work access, things like that. Yeah, yeah. And the compliancy thing's important. I like that you're so far behind. But yeah, you can, you've got to update now. That's great. I'm glad you said that. So we have those in place. Okay, so whoops, I'm skipping ahead. All right, so we started this with this meme and I figured I'd wrap it up with it and hopefully you can go away today maybe knowing a little bit more about device management. But if you were already well informed, you just need to know some specifics. We're rolling on to that next. So with that, we'll show you the slide with Business Premium and I'm not going to go into all the details of what you get. That blog, did I, let's send out the link on the blog that actually refers to all the other things that I haven't talked about. But just know, enterprise-grade security, like there's stuff that is in an enterprise E5 license that's in business premium, ransomware protection. And the transparent view you have across all those layers, it's there. And we'll move on. So does somebody send the business premium blog link or did we do that already? That would be Julia, but I think Julia hopped off. That's okay. All right. No, I'm here. I'm sending it. Oh, there she is. She's just <laughs> quiet. Okay. I didn't see her face. My right, internet okay. was being weird. So right. I didn't want to. Let's roll to Q&A. <laughs> yeah. Let's roll to Q&A. Well, thanks, Susie. But yeah, so now we'll take some time, open it up to you guys, see what questions you have, anything you want to know more about. I've got Susie and some other BMO team members on here. So feel free to drop them in the chat or just unmute yourself. I see some typing going on. Oh, great. That's fine. Chat. All right, looks like we got a question from Nick. It says, do we have the option to get business premium for just some of our employees or do we have to get it for all of our employees? Ooh, these are, I'm glad Josh and Adam are on here. Those are licensing questions. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to answer that. So you don't have to buy, Microsoft's really cool about licensing. It's not like Google or some of the other platforms where you're stuck purchasing the same license for everyone. They offer you a mixed bag of licensing, providing you meet all the qualifications, but the only people that are gonna receive those security benefits are gonna be the users that are licensed for business premium. But yeah, if you have some users who are like, hey, they just need Exchange Online, that's it. Right. They don't need anything else, they just need email. Yeah, you could buy some users on Exchange Online or basic, and then some users on premium that really need that security. We're happy to help you configure that. Thank you, Adam. Any other questions? More typing. I was gonna say, or you can share some pain <laughs> point, share some pain points or something. It's fine. I guess to fill some dead air here, just one of the things I love working about working here at BMO is we're a Surface, pretty much Surface only shop. Almost all of us here use Microsoft Surface devices, and like Susie was saying, Sur Surface is made by Microsoft. You know, the hardware is made by Microsoft, the software. So they're really rolling out a lot of features that are Surface specific, like that Surface. I put the link in the chat. The Surface Management Portal, which is just a part of the endpoint management, Intune endpoint management, but it allows you to see all your serial numbers. You can take and create service requests right with Microsoft directly if you have like hardware defects and you need to get machines replaced. There's some really cool things you can do, and we we used autopilot here when we were all signed up. So when I got hired on nine months ago, I just, they gave me an email address. I just go sign into my Surface laptop and everything's provisioned. All the work policies are in place. All the applications that I need, I have access to. It's just sign in, that's it, run some updates. It's been a seamless experience and I definitely highly yeah. recommend Surface. Joe, Joe has a question. Go for it, Joe, Do you, if Thanks. you can. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Absolutely. So we, we have a hybrid environment. Uh, mm -hmm. We would love to be able to use that uh, autopilot service. My understanding, though, is that it only allows for Azure AD join devices automatically, and there's no way to write that information back to on-prem domain controllers. So for users that are remote, uh, we often have to ship all the equipment to the home office, set them up, and then reship them out so they get registered main controllers. Is there any option around that? Because otherwise, if I ship them direct with lights out, or sorry, the autopilot, 
uh, they get connected to Azure AD, but there's no record on prem. So if they have to access any on prem services, the the you know computer account isn't an Active Directory. Is there a, a solution for that? What version of AD on prem AD are you running? Like what which version of Windows Server? Uh, 2022. Oh yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. have you set up AD Connect by any chance? We have. Perfect. There, autopilot. If I'm not mistaken, autopilot actually can run in a hybrid environment. I know our engineers have set it up in the past like that. From a technical standpoint, I would not be the person to ask. I don't know if Suzanne maybe knows a little bit more than me around that, but we that's actually actually something that we have set up for customers that are in a hybrid environment. Only thing is, obviously, you have to have AD Connect, which means you have to have a newer version of Windows Server for your AD. And do you, I'm assuming your domain controllers are probably running on the same Windows Server or the same version of Windows Server. Yes. Yeah, we're at Windows 22 or Perfect. 2020. Then, yeah, you should be fully capable of running autopilot with your hybrid environment. No problem at all. That may be something that we can we can talk to our engineers about to see what like how difficult it is to set up or if there are any sort of limitations. But to my knowledge, as long as you're running AD Connect and it's fully implemented, then you should not have any issues with a hybrid environment. Okay. Well, that would be great. We did implement Intune with both MDM and MAM uh, through Vimo right. four years ago. So if uh, oh. you know, obviously technology changes, that would be a big benefit. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. We have your contact info too, I think, Joe. That was Joe, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Just jotted it down. Great. So there, you're well advanced as far as your knowledge of the portal. And I just, if no one else has any questions, if there's, if you haven't been in the Intune portal, you know, just say, I can just give you, it's changing constantly, just to say. <laughs> of course, we don't expect anything different from Microsoft, but it is constantly improving. So I see new things like Linux on there now that we didn't see before for devices. But if you want to see just like, oh, here, like when Adam said, when it's a Windows device, oh my gosh, the control that you have. When you like look at one of those policies, you can go right down to customizing edge, you know, so that when they hit the home button, it does this. And, you know, um, again, when I came from a school environment, that was super important to me because you had to close every hole you can. And I have to say, there were not many holes that I could not close with those configuration profiles. So 